All right, we are going to finish up lesson 10.6 with some examples. I've got about two or three examples of each. Um, so just uh, let's take a look at each of these. So our theorem says that if we see something like this, we're going to set up a proportion. Remember, anytime you need to pause the video, write the example down, do the work yourself, and then come back and check it. All right, so we're going to set up our proportion here. We can set it up as long as we're consistent. So 5 over x, 7 over 4. We could do 5 over 7 and x over 4. Do not do 5 over 4 equals 7 over x. That's the main thing. So I'm going to go 5 over x equals 7 over 4. I'm going to cross multiply 7x equals 20. Divide. That does not reduce. So I'm going to leave it alone and label it. And we're done. That was a really easy one. Okay, let's take a look at another one. All right, this one. Once again, pause, attempt it on your own because some of you are going to make a careless mistake on this one. All right, this time I'm going to set it up a little bit different. I'm going to work this direction. So x over 9 equals 3 over x. Cross multiply. x times x is not 2x. x times x is x squared. We get 27. Square root, both sides. Okay, that's not a nice, easy square root, like the square root of 25 or something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and break that down to 3 and 9, 3 and 3. I found a pair. Okay, so pairs go outside. That single stays inside. And we can label that with units again, so 3 root 3. Okay. All right, different theorem. Okay, hopefully you remember what we do on this one. This is our W S S times E S S equals. We're not a room, so we'll go W S S times E S S down here. Okay, so let's put that into practice. W S S, the whole thing is 20 times the external part is 11 equals the whole thing is 8 plus X times the external part is the 8. 220 equals 64 plus 8x. I'm going to subtract that 64. Running out of room down here, so I'm going to bring this right up over here. So I get 220 minus 64. I believe that's 156 equals 8x. We're going to divide by 8. This does not reduce all the way down. You could go to like 19.5 if you want. I'm going to leave it as a fraction, 39 over 2 units. Okay. All right, next one. Same idea. WSS times ESS equals WSS times ESS. So whole secant segment is 18 times the external part is 11 equals the whole thing, x plus 10, times the external part, which is 10. 198 equals 10x plus 100. We subtract the 100. 98 equals 10x. We divide by 10. We could go to, uh, I don't really want to go to decimal, I guess, and 49 over 5 if we just divide them both by 2 units. All right, this one's a little harder. All right. Um, anytime the x gets outside here in the external secant segment part, it gets a little bit harder. Okay, but WSS, the whole thing, 18 times the external part, 5 equals x plus 9 times x. 90 equals x squared plus 9x. Okay, we can't do this by just taking a square root or something like that. So what we need to do is we need to bring the 90 over to here. So we're going to subtract 90. We're going to do that over here as well. It's going to say 0 equals x squared plus 9x minus 90. Now, this is kind of like reverse FOIL. We have to factor. So hopefully you guys remember this from algebra class where we have two separate parentheses. The two things that are at the beginning must multiply to give me x squared, so that's definitely x times x. The things at the end must multiply to give me negative 90. Well, it's got to be a positive and a negative, because if they're both negative, that would multiply to give me a positive. They have to add to give me 9. Now, if I'm adding a positive and a negative, we usually think of that as subtraction, though. So, you have to think of some numbers that multiply to give me 90 and subtract to give me 9. And if you can't think of them, just make yourself a list over here. 1 times 90, it's definitely not going to give me 9. 
2 times 45, still not going to give me 9. 3 times 30, 4 doesn't work. 5 times 18, 6 times 15, 7 doesn't work. 8 doesn't work. 9 times 10. And then once I'm kind of back to the 10 here, I don't have to try any numbers past that. So which of these numbers are going to subtract to give me 9? Well, it's the 6 and the 15. And since the 9 is positive, I need to make sure I use a positive 15 and a negative 6. If I went with a negative 15 and a positive 6, that would give me a negative 9 right here. Now, if I have something here, which I don't really know what it is because I'm not sure what x is, and something here, and I multiply them together and get 0 for an answer, one of these parentheses, one of these somethings must equal 0. So either x plus 15 equals 0, or maybe it's the x minus 6 part that equals 0. And I solve this and I get x equals negative 15. Or maybe it's x equals 6. Now in algebra class, both of these answers, negative 15 and positive 6, would make this original equation true. 18 times 5 is 90. If I take negative 15 plus 9, I get negative 6. And I multiply it by negative 15, I get positive 90. Okay, so that would make the algebra problem true. 6 would also make it true. But in geometry, this is a distance. And this distance is not going to be negative. So we're going to take that negative answer, we're going to just ignore it, and we're going to say x equals 6 units, or inches, or feet, or whatever it might be. Okay? These are a little bit harder when that x gets outside and you have to factor. We're going to do another example like that. All right? So here we go. Whole secant segment, x plus 1, times external part x, equals the whole thing 12, times the external part 6. Right now, yep, doing it this at school today, so that's why you're hearing a bell. All right, x squared plus six x, sorry, equals 72. I bring that 72 over by subtracting it, and it equals zero. I'm gonna factor this again. Okay, now there's a one right here, so x and x and a plus and a minus equals zero. What are some numbers that multiply to give me 72? I could do 1 and 72, 2 and 36, 3 and 24, 4 and 18, 5 doesn't work, 6 and 12, 7 doesn't work, 8 and 9. What's the only one that's going to give me a 1 there? Well, it's definitely this 8 and 9. I need a positive 1, so the 9 needs to be positive and the 8 needs to be negative. x plus 9 equals 0, x minus 8 equals 0, x equals negative 9, or x equals positive 8. The positive answer makes sense here, so up here, x equals 8 units. All right. All right, the next one's a little weird, a little bit harder than the other two even. All right. Um, CP students, I'm not going to give you any like this in your homework or on your test. Um, honor students, you should know how to do this. Um, CP students, that doesn't mean you can just quit the video because we got a couple examples of theorem 10.16 after this, okay? So you can kind of just ignore the next minute or two or whatever and then pay attention for the last couple examples. All right, whole thing, x plus 8 times external part x, whole thing, 11, external part 4. x squared plus 8x equals 44. Bring that 44 over. We get this. Okay, now what are some things that multiply to give me 44? 1 and 44, 2 and 22, 3 doesn't work, 4 times 11, 5 doesn't work, 6 doesn't work, 7 doesn't work, 8 doesn't work, 9 doesn't work, 10 doesn't work. I'm back to the 11, so I don't have to check anything after that. Do any of these give me 8? No, that gives me a 7 if I subtract them, 15 if I add them, 20 or 24, 43 or 45. So none of these work, so that means we have to use our quadratic formula. Quadratic formula, let's see if we remember that, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. Remember a is this number, which is a 1, b is this number, which is 8, and c is this number, which is a negative 44. Okay? Negative 8 plus or minus 64 minus and a negative. Those are going to basically cancel each other out. Give me a positive. 4 times 1 times 44 is 176 over 2 times 1 is 2. 64 plus 176 is 240. So I have negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 240 over 2. <clears throat> 240, if you break that down using your square roots and all that, you eventually get 4 root 15. I'm not going to show all that work. You can do it on your own over 2. 
Now when we reduce, we must reduce each of these by the same amount. You can't just reduce the 8 and the 2 or just the 4 and the 2. When there's a plus or a minus here, you kind of reduce in almost like a triangular pattern here. So I'm going to divide all of these things by 2. I don't have to worry about this because it's already part of the 4 root 15. So I'm going to divide all these by 2. I'm going to get negative 4 plus or minus 2 root 15. It's over 1, so I don't need to write that. Now if I take negative 4 minus 2 root 15, all right, that would be a negative answer. But if I take negative 4 plus 2 root 15, that's a positive answer. How do I know? Well, 2 root 15, root 15 is almost 4, okay, because root 16 is 4. So this is just a tiny bit under 4, times 2 is a tiny bit under 8. And negative 4 plus 8 is going to be greater than 0. So my positive answer there is actually um, going to give me a positive. So negative 4 plus 2 root 15 I'm going to put this in parentheses and put my units label outside to show that the units goes with all of it. Now, I don't know exactly what that is. I could type it in my calculator and get an answer, but I don't really want you getting decimal answers, so there you go. That's your answer. All right, back to a couple easier ones. All right, theorem 10.16. Hopefully you remember this formula. WSS times ESS equals TS squared. All right, here we go. Whole thing, 20. External part, 8 x squared. <clears throat> 160 equals x squared. Square root. Break it down as necessary. You should get 4 root 10. Okay, 4 root 10. Okay, another one. <clears throat> Whole thing. 4 plus x. External part 4 equals 6 squared. To 16 plus 4x equals 36. Subtract that 16. 4x equals 20. Divide both sides by 4. x equals 5. Go ahead and put units on those on a quiz or on a test. All right, or inches or feet or whatever it might be. Last one. x is outside. Anytime the x is outside, it gets a little harder. Whole thing, x plus 12, external part x equals 8 squared. x squared plus 12x equals 64. Bring the 64 over by subtracting. Got to factor it. x, x, plus and minus, because I multiply positive and negative, it gives me a negative answer. All right, 1 and 64, 2 and 32, 3 doesn't work, 4 and 16, 5, 6, 7 don't work, 8 times 8. Which of those are going to give me the 12? Well, it's definitely the 4 and the 16. I need a positive 12, so the bigger number's got to be positive, smaller number's negative, and I keep my equal 0. So x plus 16 equals 0, or x minus 4 equals 0. This would give me x equals negative 16. That doesn't make sense for a length. x equals 4. It's positive. It does make sense for a length, so 4 units. That's it. That's lesson 6. If you need to look at any of those examples again, just rewind to whatever part it was and review them. Make sure you know how to do those examples, though, for your quiz, test, homework. All right, almost done with Chapter 10.